Patrick, it's good to see you. Listen, I hope I'm not barging in on anything. I know how busy you guys can get. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a pleasure. I'd always make time for you. You know, I'm a big fan. I've followed you for a long time. Great. Yeah. Well, I just have some preliminary questions from my files, if that's okay. Yeah, please ask away. I mean, normally I'm a little bit opaque, but not for the great uh, Willem Dafoe. You know. <laughs> so where did you grow up? Uh, I'm from the Midwest originally, as are you. and uh, But I grew up um, on the West Coast, South Orange County, 949, um, and uh, just, just between L.A. and San Diego. Okay. And yeah. um, where do you hang out? Well, uh, I moved up to L.A. I went to college in Montana. And then, uh, you know, uh, on football, football scholarship. And then I moved. Uh, Come on. You, L- you know what I mean. Where did you hang out? Oh, oh, uh, in L.A.? I, uh, Anywhere. In L.A.? Anywhere. Well, Where I do love, you like uh, to hang out? Like when you're I hanging love- out, you know, just really relaxing and taking in your mm-hmm. thoughts. Do you like to go to a coffee shop or hang out <laughs> with friends? Maybe a living room? I'm more comfortable indoors, but doesn't mean I can't get my sunshine if you know what I mean. <laughs> I do. I do know what you mean. I, uh, no, I love, I love coffee shops. I love movie theaters and, uh, and comedy clubs. You know, I love, uh, I weirdly love comedy shows when they're not going well, as, as you would know if you came. Well, I know so. there's, there's certainly a weird thing happening with comedy these days where you really can't joke about anything. And if you do, you have some serious repercussions. Isn't that right? That's right. You can get canceled. You can get me two. You can get me one. Uh, me one. You can still have a career, but uh, me two is is tough when you're coming off. Of they me also too. have. They also have me wand. That's if you're a <laughs> Disney character and you have a wand. <laughs> it's just a little joke. I hope it's funny. I don't know if it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is funny. You know, I think when you're at your level, uh, then then it doesn't need to be as. I think it can be just a cute quirk. Mm. quip quip and not a quip but a quip and uh, you can get away with it but yeah i love comedy shows and hanging around comedy and i love movies more than most uh comedians i love classic films yeah but w- um, okay i was getting about to say what kind of movies <laughs> classic well, films like classic drama or classic horror or what you know both uh well classic drama and classic comedies uh, you, uh my favorite one of my favorite movies is one two three with uh uh it's a black and white from 1960 with um Cary Grant and it's very funny and he was very he had he had comedy chops I think when someone's dramatically funny like uh Tommy Lee Jones or Harrison Ford or you know that's a whole nother genre you know it, it, like a comedian I don't know can nail dramatic comedy very all the time you know what I mean I don't know if you know what I mean nobody knows what I mean I think don't don't put yourself down <laughs> No, I know what you mean. It's weird. You know, when you're trying to do a role or you're trying to uh, sharpen up your tools, as I like to say, there's two types of chops. There's comedy chops, acting chops, and pork chops. I guess it's three. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So what restaurants do you like to go to? Uh, You know, I'll tell you where the best hamburger that I've ever had is a Mexican restaurant or a little Mexican taco stand in LA there in uh, Los Feliz. Um, I think it's called Yucca's and it's right there off of uh, Vermont. It's right by Vermont Los Feliz Boulevard. Oh, I, and I think I got yeah. food poisoning there once. Oh, <laughs> let's, do you remember what you had? Uh, I had a gefilte fish burger. No, I, I don't remember. Again, another no. joke. I, yeah. I shouldn't be trying to joke. I want to get into your life because yes, it's oh, please, very yeah. interesting and you've done everything you can to do very, very well and you've done very well and you've had an eclectic life already. Tell me about teaching school. I mean, you're a teacher at school. I mean, not everybody's a teacher, you know? No, no, no. What is, I, it, uh, what is it like? Well, after COVID, COVID hit in uh, what, March 2020 and uh, I was able to stay afloat with comedy for about six months. And then uh, it just dire straits set in. And so um, I went back to uh, my old high school in South Orange County and started teaching, substitute teaching, uh, working in alumni relations, event planning, uh, stuff like that. And it's been uh, crazy because, you know, you get older and I'm not married with kids. I have no interest in young people. 
um, or their development really until getting back at this job it was my first exposure to teenagers, young teenagers and, uh, and college entrance exams and stuff like that. And having to discipline kids. Cause you know, I've always, well, you know, you're, I've been... you're, you're not allowed to spank, you know, but in my day you could spank, <laughs> you know, I used to get hit across the face in cafeteria because, you know, I would wear these weird hats and I had, <laughs> you know, you know, weird dressing. I would wear, I would wear sequins, but you know, not how you would think, you know, like I would wear sequins on my shoes. <laughs> and so that was kind of a problem. Did you ever wear sequins on your shoes? Uh, no, no, I, I was pretty mainstream. I, I did dress uh, one year for Halloween as Big Red Riding Hood. And instead of Little Red Riding Hood, I was Big Red Riding Hood. And my friend was a little girl and she dressed like uh, uh, the Little little Bad Wolf. It was, so it was Little Bad Wolf and Big uh, big Red Riding Hood. And I kind of had reddish hair. And uh, yeah. Nice. We, yeah. So Very we won nice. A, we, we won a, <laughs> we won a uh, Halloween competition with that but never sequence shoes no what about pumpkins you talk about halloween and it's coming up too yeah what do you like you like pumpkin things you like pumpkin spice or that, i do that i, kind I of like thing? i like pumpkin spice i like pumpkin seeds i i bake i bake the seeds and uh they're really nice they're healthy it's good for digestion what what do you mean they're nice <laughs> like they're friendly yeah <laughs> They're easy to chew. They're easy to swallow. They're easy to digest. The enzymes break up nicely. Just like my ex-wife. <laughs> yeah, just what, that's what I've heard. Listen, I just have a few more questions, if yeah. you don't mind. Oh, please. I mean, the great, the great one. So, um, let's see. Um, you taught school. You went to school. Where did you go to school again? Did you mention oh, that? Yeah, I went to college in Montana, and then I went to Japan on an exchange program, and I was there in Japan for two years. So I can teach a uh, number of subjects, you know, history, uh, English, Japanese. Uh, and uh, well, so, hold on a second. Yeah. Let me yeah. get this straight. You yeah. speak Japanese. Si. Well, that's that's Italian. <laughs> yeah, I teach. I, I speak Japanese a little bit. I'm proficient. At one time, I was really strong when I was living there for two years in my 20s. But uh, that's been a couple decades. So it's it's still there. It's just a little, uh, you know, needs needs a little... Um, touch up you know can we hear a little right now so, so uh yeah what you doing what you doing uh <laughs> okay it's just i don't speak the language and i'm trying to help out yeah, no, you know, it sounded good it sounded like you really do speak the language and it was a little bit of a test on my part okay. you know you know asking you that and all that but uh you like fudge bars <laughs> I do. I like fudge. Uh, I prefer chocolate to non-chocolate. You know, my dad worked for M&M Mars. He worked in haagen And I always liked the chocolate stuff better than the Starburst Skittles, you know, fudge, uh, creamsicles. I always liked fudge or chocolate better. Any questions for me? Uh, yeah. You, you, you grew up in the Midwest as well. Uh, That's right. Yeah. And you were, as a youth, you were at that famous, infamous football game. That where it, the temperature was like below zero, like 20 degrees below zero. I was going to see if you had any good memories of that or if you're still a football <laughs> fan or, or anything. I don't know. Let's put it this way. I have a lot of frigid memories of that day. <laughs> I freezed my balls off. Seriously, literally, I froze both of my balls, testicles off my body. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, and then or are you related to the great Daniel Defoe, the author? I was going to see if you he, – he wrote Robinson Crusoe. I was going to see if you – you know, he didn't actually re wrote that book. He, he did. He did write the uh, title, and he had something to do with the structure of the script and the book. You know, was later made into a script. But that that particular movie that he made, which started out as a book, became a theatrical release, and then became a play, and then became a book again. None of that was his doing. You know, he was actually a marshal. He was a marshal of law and he, he worked near the, the Jericho people and they came over and a lot of those people wrote most of the dialogue, but he did have something to do with it, but not what you think, not oh. to the extent that you think. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, How's my eye line, by the way? This is me looking at the camera and this is me looking at you and I don't want to not look at you, but I want people to see my eyes. Can you see my eyes? Are they open? I 
They're open and they're very nice. They're okay. very good eyes. They're very specific. You've always had very specific eyes. Very uh, there was purpose uh, <laughs> when Willem Dafoe looks at you or looks shares a scene with someone. There's always been purpose in his moments. Um, well, that's not the information I've received. <laughs> I, how was working with Gene Hackman? You know, one of my favorite movies is Mississippi Burning, and I just I thought you guys did such a good job together. Well, Gene is a wonderful guy. You know, we spend a lot of time together during that movie and the subsequent summer after we vacationed in Bolivia uh, with our families. And, you know, I think what makes Gene so great and what made him so great and what continues to make him so great is, you know, there's a deliberate nature to you know he doesn't just pick up a glass of water you know he he forgets about picking it up it's almost a second thought it's almost like there's a glass of water am i thirsty let me forget about it and then let me go and pick up that glass of water with urgency and uh uh, there's almost a message involved in it well, I mean, and it's effortless too. It seems like when you when you guys have that synergy on camera, it looks like. Well, it's it's really magnetic, and it's the reason I do it, and the reason I continue to act is because of the the fire that is there. You know, a lot of people just when they act, it's just to get the lines out, to hear the lines before your lines, and then get the lines out, as opposed to reacting listening reacting and being able to take charge you know it reminds me of a time i was at 7-eleven and i was trying to get the coca-cola slurpee yeah. but they were out and i was really angry but i didn't say anything and i walked out with that contempt and i ended up backing my car into another car so it's yeah it's just that's just the nature of life and the nature of uh being one with things you know like rainbows and I mean, do you like rainbows? I, I do. I, I, I enjoy them. Uh, I've never, I've seen pictures, but I've never seen a full one, you know, uh, even if it's Ireland. I've just only seen the half. I'm just, someday, you know, it's something to something to look forward to. Yeah. Is a, is a that's, full one. That's what she said. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's really good. That's really good. Uh, yeah. Now, do you, are you a Coca-Cola drinker or... Um, you know, I I like Coca Cola. I think I've faded out on it a little bit. I like root beer, but not every root beer. Sure. I like A um, and W root beer, but I don't like vanilla. And then when I buy it accidentally, it really pisses me off. But um, I usually don't buy it, so it doesn't make my my mistake list. Um, I like sugary things, but again, in moderation, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because if you're at Seven Eleven, I mean, the sl- the Slurpee is. I mean, you can get your sodas anywhere, but I, I would think you'd go for a Slurpee or something like that. You know, I mean, is that is it is do you know what you're getting into going in or do you like to wing it? I mean, is it, is it like stepping into a scene? I mean, what does 7-Eleven mean? To no, it's, it's more like stepping into a 7-Eleven. Oh. It's really not a big deal, you know, but I, again, I don't know what I want, but I know that I'm thirsty. You know, it's like the court, you know, the the cart before the horse. You know, it's like I can look at ice, not be fulfilled, have some ice and a drink together, and then I'm fulfilled. So, um, no, I don't know what I'm going to order when I get there. And, you know, it's but maybe that's part of the fun, too. Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, risk taker, uh, being able to be comfortable in not controlling the situation. Uh, That's gross. I can't see your mouth right now. I hope that you're filming your mouth. You don't have to get back too much. Maybe yeah. it's just the setup of it. I don't. That's good. Maybe that just good? do your mouth for a while. Just shoot your mouth so I could go back okay. and maybe in oh, post okay. we could, you know, add the dialogue back in there. Okay. Shoot my you, mouth. So you better put it back where it was because now it's it look like it looks like you're trying to eat the camera. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm. I don't want to do that. I mean, to think that you would actually eat the camera would be I, almost too ridiculous. It, it really would. Isn't you know, that I'm, right, Patrick? I, I have a big smile, Willem. Uh, I have big teeth. I was, uh, you know, I was always a fan of Bugs Bunny, but this is ridiculous. You know. You know that's funny. I almost had a question for you about Bugs Bunny. When did you first 
see Bugs Bunny? And do you remember what that felt like for you? Yeah, it would have been late 70s. And, lo- you know, I just loved uh, cartoons. And I loved the smart assery uh, of Bugs. And then he could, you know, use his mouth and his sense of humor to get him out of trouble. Got him into plenty of trouble, as we know. But uh, his ability to get it out and just not caring. Just total flippancy. Total kind of disrespect. Yeah, for... but is that human suffering? I mean, do you think Bugs suffered like we suffer? Uh, I think early on he did. And, uh, you know, his upbringing, I don't know what his upbringing was like. I don't pretend to know. Uh, I've never, you know, gone public about my opinions about his upbringing. But uh, I think there was some darkness there. You know, he, yeah. he's, he talks about Albuquerque a lot, which just has never been, you know, I mean, that's, that's Breaking Bad. That's Better Call Saul. But before that, there was bugs. And I think he was trying to get back home to there, but yet didn't ever want to go there again. So he kind of was suffering his whole life. But the bottom line is he's a bunny. We're not bunnies. It's hard to say for sure. If 70s were the 70s, there were a lot of cowboy hats. There's still a lot of cowboy hats. There's not a lot of bugs bunnies left. No, no, there's not. Uh, there's a shortage, and uh, you know they can they can mass produce and uh, multiply, as we know, and hopefully, hopefully, the bunny population and the bunny renaissance, which is something everybody wants. I think, I think, and hope it can return uh, someday very soon. Let's go ahead and bring the camera up a little bit so I can see your eyes. It's just a little too weird to be watching someone's mouth for okay. a long period of time. It's sure. I start to make judgments about the shape of your teeth and your lips. And you do have nice lips. I think that's something you don't have to work on. But as far as, can you bring the camera just a little bit? I'm not missing your eyes. Okay. All right. That's good. Um, You went to Catholic school. Yeah. What was that like? and, And how did you survive that? That's a good question. Uh, grade school, high school, college. Yeah, I did. I, you know, I, when I graduated high school and told some uh, administrators, priests and nuns, teachers, I said, yeah, I'm going to go to a Catholic college. And even they were like, oh, you should give yourself a break. You know, you, sh- you should take a break. Like, you, you mean the people that worked at the school were like, you're getting your head into something that you might not want to get your head into? Yeah, you, you're, you've done enough time. Like, why are you... You're going to continue this? They were asking me that. But, uh, yeah, but, I, you know, it's a good uh, – gave me a good base, right? Gave me a good structure and uh, met a lot of good people as a result and uh, took me to college, which then took me to Japan. And uh, I was a big Notre Dame fan as a kid, you know, Notre Dame football. And, uh, yeah, they were good. They were really good then. But, you know, from the Midwest, grew up on the West Coast. But we always had Midwest roots stay with us. You know, and uh, talk about talk about roots for a second, because yeah, I've seen the mini series and I know yeah. what a right. I know what a root is in terms of vegetables, uh, plant life. What yeah. are you what are yeah. you what do you if you had to come up with new roots, not I'm not saying going back in your life, but like new roots that were recently sown. And, yeah. And, and you had to do that now. What would you say your roots are? Uh, I, I don't know that there's much similarity between my own and Alex okay, Haley. Then what about the band, The Roots? Yeah, I, I really like them. I know what do you Rust, think about? I know Rusted Root. Uh, I, I listened to some of their stuff. I, I was a fan of Alex Haley. I was a fan of Bill Haley and the Comets. Uh, you know, and uh, and, and yeah, I, I you know, I, I'm a fan of all of it. Um, I'm open minded to all types of miniseries. You know, Roots was one of the first Netflix type shows and uh, it, it was revolutionary and I don't think it gets enough respect or attention uh, and I think it should be re-released and in some form, but maybe the Smithsonian could do something special as a tribute uh, but I, I like the band too. I don't know that the band has anything to do with the miniseries. From it the doesn't 70s. but it also yeah. gives me something to ponder and think about because you're an interesting yeah. character and I played Jesus Christ, so you know I'm you not. A sh- you can shake a stick at me, but you might not be able to poke it through me. You know, is 
the old uh, adage. Did yeah. you see? Did you see? Yeah, you movie? were amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah, that's uh, Scorsese. It was incredible uh, and very risque. Very, uh, especially at the time. Was that eighty seven? I think it was right 80s, around. It was eighty. It was towards the end of eighty six. We shot it in okay. the beginning of eighty six. And I remember Martin 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 Scorsese would um, would get on the cross. You know, when we were at lunch, Martin would get on the. Uh, you know, he would just get up there, and he he would stay up there the entire lunch, and I think he would feel it out and 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 kind of get the, you know, the jockeying position on such a thing. What would it be like to be Jesus Christ, or at least what would it be like to be on a cross? Because you know. Well, yeah, he was a carpenter, and then if you look Martin, at the way, he, yeah, he, Martin was a, Martin was a carpenter. So was Harrison Ford. Harrison yeah, Ford I, was also. Yeah, I was referring to Jesus Christ to the character oh, you were right, playing. Yeah, right. But but so are those gentlemen, and so is Bernie Sanders, um, and uh, were they all Jewish carpenters? I think Bernie was. Bernie and Harrison's probably a quarter as, as a quarter I half. think Harrison is probably a quarter but I don't I don't have the paperwork I'm not right. it's I don't have that information right, right. I wish I did right. yeah I mean and Scorsese I mean, yeah is Italian but um but a, you know a great film and very uh I, I don't know how close to the real uh you know the real details how, how it unfolded uh I definitely know what it's like 2,000 years later uh, and the interpretation or misinterpretation of his message and stuff like that. Well, that's the thing. How can you prove it either way? I mean, yeah. I think when we got involved in the movie and I knew I was going to play Jesus, I watched a lot of uh, a lot of classic uh, Turner movies. Okay. Just to get the idea of something that has been around for a while that had a classic feel. And to be Jesus for at least even a movie gave me the perspective of, okay, look, you know, I don't have the best body. Maybe now is the time to flaunt that, you know, because it was, you know, very, I look emancipated and it's okay. It's okay. It's no, you look fantastic in it. Mace, and... Did I say, I mean, emaciated. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, so you look fan. It, it was a great, you have a great build and, and he's, he's, uh, he, he's he's very well uh, represented in, in the structures that, you know, if you look at crucifixes around the world, he looks really good. Um, but then also in Platoon, when you're in your scene, when you're when you're dying, you have that kind of the lifted arms and the kind of human sacrifice as you go to your knees. It's, I was like, oh, my God, this is a similar uh, exit, a character exit of the film that you had in the other one. It's crazy. The, the, the similarities, you know, I mean, that's. It's, Oliver Stone and and, and uh, Scorsese. I mean, crazy, right? And you know, when we were shooting the platoon scene, where I was on my knees, I actually tore my anterior cruciate ligament, and it really hurt. And we had to do we do several more takes, and each time I was just ravaged in pain. But I channeled that that pain and that frustration into the role of the soldier. And it ended up being, you know, I think a good idea at the time. And, you know, classically, it looks, it looks, it looks real. So, yeah, yeah, I, I didn't know that. That's incredible that you did several takes after an ACL. I mean, that normally wipes you out for eight to 10 months, maybe a year. Right. It's, you know, it's one of those things when you come to Hollywood, you don't expect yourself to injure yourself. And when you do, you're kind of thrown into a precarious position. And, you know, you know, when you're nervous, I, I don't know how you are, but when I'm nervous, I don't want to eat. And uh, I didn't eat until I ended up getting surgery on my knee, really. I ate the wow. first. Yeah. And, and we're, now were the, you guys shot on location? Were the people nice to you or were you were you treated well as an actor or was... Was there, there was, still some animosity toward America? There was some light picketing. There was some, you know, you go to a nice restaurant and somebody notices you there and they say something to you that's disparaging. Um, it was hard. It was difficult. It wasn't, um, it wasn't every day, but it was most days, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, it's a testament to your uh, ability and, and strength, inner and outer. 
you're 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 just as ripped on the inside as as you were on the outside. You know that's true, and also in my mind, I'm ripped. If I, you know, I because every now and then I will dabble in um, edibles. Okay, nice. And then I get it. You have it's, good vein. There's good vein. Like there's good blood flow because you can see veins in the arms, uh, stuff like that. I've always been complimented on my blood flow, if you know what I mean. <laughs> that's, that's that's good. Uh, no, because you're gonna want that as we get older. Yeah, you're gonna want that as we get older. Uh, it's something uh, you know that uh, you want to keep going into the next uh, phase of your life and career. You know, I mean, let's right. let's be honest. What about your career? What what where are you with it? I know that you you do a lot of stand up yeah. teaching, but you have your eye on the prize. I imagine I do. there are projects you're working on, scripts, things like this. Yeah, I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to sell a sh- you know I love sports, I love history, I love traveling, so I'm trying to sell a show right now that involves all three of those, hosted by myself, and uh, I just kind of go from sports organization to sports organization to explore the uh, history and culture. Uh, of their mascot. So it's a show called Mascots that I hope takes off. And uh, it'd be a nice, you know, it's like Anthony Bourdain, but for sports. You know. And what is the tone? Because you have a bit of a dry delivery, I can tell just by talking to you today. You have a bit of a, you know, there's almost a, a sarcastic underflow to you. Um, is that how the, the show goes? Or is it just um, something else? Or what is it? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is quite it will put you to sleep. You know, it's good for an insomniac because my voice and tone and look and style can, can really get people to doze off. So we really have to do a lot of punch up in editing to sex it up. You know, we, 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 sur- I, I'm surrounded by good looking people. Uh, and we do a lot of, a lot of bells and whistles, Willem, a lot of bells and whistles in the finished product to kind of punch it up. Is you is know. this true though? But again, it seems like you might be joking around. You might be, <laughs> pulling my leg is this no this is a real thing and, and we do we do try to uh you know uh punctuate it just just to balance out for that kind of mtv element uh you know and little animation here and there uh try try to make quick cuts because i i tend to talk a little slow and, and it, it, it can be a droll dead beat thing so we really try to punch it up quick interviews quick hitting a lot of voiceover uh, really, really uh, get in the editing room and, and, and punch it up because, you, I don't know, you just nowadays the attention span is, is so short. And whether we know it or not, even an American audience is a very sophisticated viewer. Uh, maybe not a sophisticated thinker, but, but viewer. You know, they know right away if it's good, even though they're not necessarily the most intelligent. Life is such a strange thing. One day you're running around, everything's fine. The next day... Yeah. You're gone. Yeah, yeah. Eerie. It's, it's really eerie. It is. Yeah, you've got your health one day, and then the next day, uh, yeah, it's all it's all coming to a crash. Do you exercise? You know, I, yeah, I do. I do. I was just on a cruise ship doing comedy, and uh, you got a lot of downtime, and so I was able to uh, exercise. And it just takes two or three days to get it going again, and uh, it, it felt good. Now, I, from I, what I understand, those cruise ships play pretty well. Uh, yeah, pay pretty well. <laughs> Do they play as well? Well, well, <laughs> well. The audience is going to be tough. You're dealing with quite a range. You know, you're dealing with elderly people in electric carts, wheelchairs, and stuff like that that ne- don't necessarily need them. They just don't want to walk. Uh, and then you've got people bringing their kids, and then you've got young twenty-something couples. You've got newlyweds. You've got different nationalities, age groups. Um, and different uh, socioeconomic backgrounds. And it's tough. You've got to find common material to get them all to laugh at. So you usually end up just joking about the buffet. Right. The the ice cream machine and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. 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 And the uh, grape leaves and stuff, grape leaves, if you on a Mediterranean one. Yes, yes. <laughs> grape leaves and all hummus and, and such. And, and there's two or three pools, you know, three or four jacuzzis. Uh, you know, there's now, you, are pianos. you allowed? Are you allowed to go in the jacuzzis? Because I know that some of these cruise ships, when you're the comedian, they don't want you to go in the jacuzzi. You're not supposed to mingle with the people on the boat. Is that true? Right. Yeah. As long as you're not in the way of them having a good time, um, which you know, if, if you're not like if you're at the bar 
but they've got people waiting. They're like, hey, you're non-revenue. You know, go to another bar or sit in the back of this one or go find another activity. If it's crowded, they don't want you in there. They want, you know, like it's the casino. If there's nothing going on, then they'll 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 have you. But that's the thing. Yeah. One day you're walking around a cruise ship, getting some ice cream. The next day, just disappear. Eerie. Really eerie. Yeah. Something like that. Isn't that right, Patrick? Yeah. Pretty eerie, isn't it? That sounds pretty accurate. And I think you you summed up quite a bit uh, with that sentence. Let's have lunch in a couple of weeks. After I sort down some of this information, I'll get back to you and we'll get something to eat. How does That'd be sound? great. No, I'd love that. Not you know, and continued success for you because uh, just just you, the range of films and, and work you've done is just amazing. Well, that's very nice for you to say. Very nice. Very very nice. I really like that. Thank you. So, do you have anything you want to plug? Your social media or things coming up? Uh, sure. I've got a podcast called Keen on Things. It's my last name, Keen, and it's just called Keen on Things. And uh, you can find that on all the all the, uh, you know, podcast locations, um, platforms. And then, yeah, uh, Keen of Comedy is my handle on all social media. And that's K- that's K-E-A-N-E. That's correct. Keen. K- K-E-A-N-E, right. just like the band from England. Yeah. Just like the band from England. Well, not everybody knows that band. I, I know. I really need them to get bigger so I can ride their coattails with that spelling thing. You know. Do you like coats? Yeah, I do. I do. I do like coats. That's what I miss most about living in Southern California is, you know, when it's only 40, 59 degrees, you're still putting on a coat because you just want to show it off or just be in one, you know, in December. January. Well, there's there's a lot of comfort in a coat. Huh. And, you know, there's also a lot of comfort in a goat. But that's a different show. And that's a different <laughs> story. Isn't that I right? hope it's I hope it's a different guest with that topic. But <laughs> Patrick, you were a great guest. Honestly, I had a great time. I wish Jeff was here, but I enjoyed myself so much. Yes, I do. I love Jeff, and uh, he's great. I I always love running into him and seeing him, and I wish him the best as well. All right. Patrick Keene for the hour. I'm Willem Dafoe, and we'll be back next time. I don't know when because I'm just the guest host. So um, you can go to thejeffrichardshow.com or tastyjeff.com. Instagram for me, uh, excuse me, for Jeff is the Jeff Richards uh, on Instagram. So without further ado, Patrick Keene, thank you. Thank you. Bye, Willem.